is uh, me and Corey Roddick and Pat Butler. And we do two hours of nothing but metal. Do old school, do brand new stuff, local music. If you're in a band, send us your stuff. Uh, your requests. Yeah, we're going to pull some Queensryche off of uh, Mind Crime this weekend. So it's a lot of fun. It's called Two Hours to Midnight. It is 10 o'clock Saturday nights. We'll be taking a bit of a hiatus over the Christmas holiday. But other than that, um, looking forward to it. What is this? This is the YouTube dude that you watched the documentary on? That uh, you sent me? It's on, yeah, it's on. Is this part of the documentary? It's part of the documentary, yeah. He set up, so in this scene, uh, the director set up an inter, or like for him to meet with a recruiter so that Boogie 2988 could get a job. Because so he's what, in like dire straits financially. What is his hook on YouTube? He just was in early, and he just would rant about video games and things like that. Okay. So he just, he was just at the very beginning. Was he on Twitch? No, he was just a YouTube guy for okay. the most part. Yeah. So he wasn't, he wasn't playing games. He wasn't and, playing. He would just yeah. talk about them mostly. Doesn't sound very exciting. And people loved it. Four million subscribers, man. Yeah, he, right. He, he so how was videos. he not making money? Well, people stopped watching his videos, and then Oof. he had he had sponsors that all backed out when. There's there's somebody that targeted him and made this big long thread like here's where he says this racist thing here's where he says this sexist thing oh, here's where he does I see. makes this reference to child pornography and or child molestation or whatever and he goes through all this like somebody it was like a 15 page thread because he had been doing it for so long and then he had that incident where he got arrested and became overall unlikable to his subscribers because he was just complaining about not making enough money all the time. I see. So they turned just, on him. Yeah. So this is him sitting down with a recruiter. To try and figure out exactly how to sell himself in the job market. What's his name? Boogie2988? Yes. And, and there's a documentary on him on YouTube? Yeah. There's that. Now, the, the downside to that is I am extremely depressed. So there's some mental health issues that we bring to the table. And then physically, uh, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history, and no education. And when you Google my name, you might see rumors that I beat my ex-wife, and I'm also a pedophile, uh, but that could be. Wait a second. <laughs> He's a 49-year-old man, all right? Yeah, yeah. Even if he was on YouTube from day one, how does he not have any work history? Well, he doesn't really have any, like, he... He's never had a job? He, he Earlier in this clip, he mentioned that he worked as a dishwasher for a okay. couple of years, and he worked at a game store for a few years. He doesn't years. have recent work yeah. history. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Gaps in his resume, like, as it were. Huge gaps, you know, 17, 18 years is without having a job. Yeah. And there's a game store that's closed. Like Rumors that I beat my ex-wife and I'm also a pedophile. Uh, but that could be an issue. Uh <laughs> this recruiter's <laughs> nodding her head. Yes, that could definitely be an issue. Yes. If you've been accused of assault and being a pedophile, yes, that could. For employers that would research me. So if we can find someone who won't Google me, that would be good. Well, uh, that's difficult. Right. I mean, I can't, yeah. I can't submit your resume to a client and then request that they don't Google. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you get a request, <laughs> like here's the resume, don't Google them though. We think be... this guy would be a great fit. Yeah. FYI, please don't Google his name because mm -hmm. that's uh, a red flag. Does this continue in a positive direction? Uh, I mean, there's one more moment where. I think there's no expletives. Though, I don't. I don't think so. Okay. And then physically, I, I'm easily injured. Like I injured myself coming here today. I twisted my ankle. And then, <laughs> listen, it is a hard. Like it's, it it's, is a hard sell. That can't be fun when yeah. your YouTube days are pretty much over, mm -hmm. and you have to sit in front of a person. I would be terrified if I finally, once and for all, my career was over. Right? Yeah. Prematurely, in my estimation. And I don't have skills. Right? I've been in show business my cop, whole adult life. I, oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> and my work ethic is not great because of the depression and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, I mean, I do have some pretty big references. Keemstar, he, he probably put in a good word or 
kid behind a camera, mm -hmm. you know, kid behind a camera. McJogger Nuggets might. I worked with him. I had on the. On See, that sounds like a. That sounds like it's kind of. A little, little massaged, yeah. But well, yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, it's, it, it, overall, it's those uh, are the high points. I mean, that, that that's just one of the scenes where <laughs> when he's listing off all the things, it's like, and if you Google me, uh, you, you might hear rumors <laughs> <laughs> that I beat my ex-wife and that I'm a who pedophile. are my references? Uh, Majuggle Guggle ninety six yeah, yeah. and uh, Hooser Goozer seventy seven. Oh God! It was just one of those things. Your where references are just other YouTube dopes. I hadn't. Nothing to do last night, and I stumbled upon this documentary and just ate it up. And it is at, at one point in the documentary, the director stopped. He's like, I had to take a break from being around this guy because it was so incredibly depressing. No, because he's just he made a ton of money as a YouTuber, but he would just spend it so frivolously he talks about all the prostitutes that he would spend money on and like uh the sugar you know sugar yeah. what they call it sugar daddy situations and it was it's brutal um and we're positive it's not like a spinal tap type situation yeah like that the whole documentary isn't staged correct and i don't know how, like i mean that's bone dry humor if it is but yeah. i mean okay no because it's this is the funniest part it's Mostly just incredibly depressing. Right. Him trying to get a job would mm -hmm. be the the high point of it. Well, a lot of people have thoughts on Pound Cake uh, joining the Cleveland uh, Police Department. I'm all in favor of it. You know, uh, if they're going to pop the maximum age up to 55, obviously that, that gives him plenty of room. But uh, I heard from one of our bureau chiefs in Rochester, Alan, I, the town I grew up in has a police force of about 12 people, and they all make over 100 grand a year because of overtime. They just wait until shift change and then nail someone for a ticket, and, and then, then they, they gotta stay, stay on, until the yeah. judge comes in at 7. Mm, that's... Pretty good gig in Hillbilly Town, New York State. You know. So. Clever, clever. Alan, wouldn't Pound Cake's past criminal record disqualify him? Well, that's a good question, too. Uh, I don't know. Well, was he ever convicted? Hey, I molest children. Yeah, never never been convicted. He was accused. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <And laughs> There's they, rumors. I was like, and if they <laughs> accuse me of something, I'm suing. Yeah. And then that time he was recorded while a person was being beat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not going <laughs> to... No. I mean, that's not a good look either. Yeah, but that's not going to stop me from getting a job at the police force. Please. <laughs> they might be like, all right, let's go. <laughs> <Like, laughs> right. Ooh, it feels so good. He can hang. Uh, he can hang. That's right. Putting the force in police force. Mm. Well, anywho, it's something to consider. Uh, You're we're looking for a purpose. Th aren't we all though? Earlier, I thought no, he I said, "Oh, one. is that what he I thought he said purpose?" No. Oh, purpose. That makes a hell of a lot more sense. Now I'm looped in. Porpoise. <laughs> Porpoise Christie. <laughs> that's where I want to move. That's my next radio gig. <laughs> he moves to Texas and takes the air name Porpoise Christie. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the Texans Hi, everybody, would love what's me. What's going on, man? What? I said, I'm sure the Texans would love me. Hey, Texas can be a good time, boy. Depending on where you are, Corpus Christi, you're right in the ocean. Hells yeah. Why not? And I already have my intro music. the golf, music. at least. Huh? You know what my intro music would be? What? <laughs> the bitty bitty bum bum. That's Selena. <laughs> hey, Porpoise Christie. Hey, Porpoise Christie. Oh, is that a... I love it. Jams, little too. Little, little. Bitty bitty bum bum. Yeah. <laughs> Drive now you time. got it. There you go. All right, Corpus Christi. It's Corpus Christi. Yeah. Bitty bitty bum bum. Oh, I love it. <laughs> He's like guys. an hour from the Mexican border. You'd have such a great time, boy. The smuggling dudes out of Reynosa. The cartel would kill me in my sleep. You yeah, they would. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Funky, funky. I love Corpus Christi. That's a great name for you. Mm. Down there in Texas. What are the Corpus Christi radio stations? You could be working at uh, Radio Libertad. So it's it is very close to the border. You could be working at the beach, 96.5, a wild 105.5.
Any one of those. KFTX, real country. KPUS. You could be working at K-Puss. It's classic rock. <laughs> K-Puss. Yeah. Playing our favorite artist, Puss Hat. Lock it <laughs> in and squeeze the dial, baby. Lemma whore. You put the whore in Lemma whore. I mean, you say it's <laughs> you close could. to the border, but Corpus Christi is still like three hours from the border. That's, That's closer that than Austin yeah. or Houston. Yeah, it's right down there. It's not far. Three hours is not that far. That is not far at all. So... That, that might be to, great for you. Got money to give away? I'm sorry. You got money to give away? No, oh, I don't. Okay. Not this hour. No. Uh, yeah, it's a thousand dollars, courtesy of the <laughs> Buzzard Bookie. <laughs> Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win one thousand dollars now. Enter this nationwide keyword at wmms.com. Bank. That's bank. Enter it now at wmms.com. Uh, we are talking about the whale girl earlier. Somebody suggested that the girl who left the voicemail for me, that kind of stuttering, very slow girl, they said it sounds a lot like the, the whale, the, the girl who cries like a whale when she's calling her boyfriend. One of our bureau chiefs in the great state of Oregon reminded me that uh, they are out there, they're celebrating exploding whale day. Do you remember when they blew up the whale that had beached itself? in Oregon, and they thought that that would get rid of it. They're like, we have no other, uh, I guess they figured they had exhausted all their other options. Have you ever seen this video? They they blew up a whale. Yes, I have seen this. And video. they thought it would get rid of it, except it just rained chunks on mm -hmm. people and cars. And uh, that was, uh, I think, this day, 53 years ago. It was in 1970. And there was a small town in Oregon called Florence, and a sperm whale had beached and died. So they had a massive whale carcass. And the calculations were off or something. Whoever they entrusted their dynamite <laughs> calculations to screwed it up. And so the people in this town, though, I mean, it's all they've got. It's the only thing that puts them on the map is exploding whale day. When it blew up, that was a smell beyond all description. We said, what do you want us to do? Well, we're going to dispose of this whale at, at, at the coast. We want you to go down and cover. I said, really? And they said, they're going to use dynamite. They said, okay, we'll go. <laughs> Mostly what we focus on is bringing the community in, education, and talking about history a little bit. You know, this is a very historical event. We want to make sure that the whale is remembered. Mm hmm because, again, that's all this town has going for it. So they've really got to point people to the exploding whale. I mean, why Why not? It's a of course. landmark event. Oh, that, yeah. I mean, you can't buy that kind of publicity. You know, every town is looking for some kind of tourism hook. And so if you're Florence, Oregon, here's a part of the original report. Well, I'm confident that it'll work. The only thing is we're not sure just exactly how much uh, explosives it'll take to disintegrate this thing so the scavengers, seagulls, and crabs and whatnot can clean it up. Our camera stopped rolling immediately after the blast. The humor of the entire situation suddenly gave way to a run for survival as huge chunks of whale blubber fell everywhere. A parked car over a quarter of a mile from the blast site was the target of one large chunk. The passenger compartment literally smashed. Everyone on the scene was covered with small particles of dead whale. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone on the scene was covered in small particles of dead whale. They... Imagine if you were in that car. All oh, right. It's amazing nobody got killed. Smashed, I mean, yeah. everybody was on the beach waiting for them to blow the whale up. And listen, you don't know if it were any one of us, we'd be down there too. Hey, let's watch them blow up this whale. This would be pretty sweet. But they didn't know. So, yeah, a couple of cars got wrecked. How do you file that insurance claim? <laughs> whale. It yes. ain't an act of God, it's an act of man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. My car was my, my 70, uh, 1969 Dodge Dart was done in by floating whale chunks or exploding whale chunks. But, yeah, that's what they've got going for them there is exploding whale day. I heard Stansbury talking about the uh, Toy Hall of Fame earlier, too. We, we mentioned a couple of weeks ago where they were 
uh, putting up the fan vote. It's kind of like what they do with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where they'll take the nominees and then they'll let the fans vote on who they think should, you know, get an extra ballot or I don't know what. And I guess what won the fan vote this year was the, was it the Corn Popper? Something like that. Cabbage Patch Kids uh, went in. There's a, talking about documentaries, there's a Cabbage Patch Kid documentary out. It's called Billion Dollar Babies. Did anybody watch the Zach Galifianakis Beanie Babies movie? It was like a, uh, a dramatization or a, kind of a fictionalization of the guy who invented Beanie Babies. No, I didn't see that. I didn't even no, know that I was a thing. Either. It was on HBO or something, or maybe Netflix. It's called Beanie B Billions or something. I don't know. Beanie, the Beanie Bubble, Zach Galifianakis. Might have been on HBO. But anyway, this documentary about the Cabbage Patch Kids is going to be out on Black Friday, appropriately. But uh, Nerf is in the National Toy Hall of Fame, which I believe is also in Rochester. The Fisher Price Corn Popper and the Cabbage Patch Kids are in there. It's, uh, they can't believe it took Nerf this long to get into the Toy Hall of Fame. The, the, every time they said that, when Sand got in just a couple <laughs> yeah. years ago. Guys, like, do yeah, Nerf they, and not Sand. They take a long time to get stuff in that Hall of Fame. They're very stingy. Nerf was up every year. Nerf's up for a, a finalist. Last year, it got beat out by He-Man, Light Bright, and the Spinning Top. Right. See, the like, Spinning Top should have been in in there decades ago. Yeah. Spinning tops have been around forever. Yeah. And they just got in. That's right. I mean, the four tops are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, so why shouldn't Spinning Top be in the Toy Hall of Fame? Four tops been in for... They were one of the first bands to go in, weren't they? Uh, you know, uh, early days of the Rock Hall, they were putting... They were kind of retroactively, they're like, you know, those early days... You could throw a dart and find a band that should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So they were going to all those, like, R&B and soul groups and stuff. So I'm sure the four tops are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But for people who are uh, keeping track of the goings on there at the Toy Hall of Fame, which isn't even its own thing. It's like a co people are telling me it's like the corner of a museum or something. You just walk in and they go, hey, there it is, Toy Hall of Fame. Like the Radio Hall of Fame. Some dude, got, dumb thing got it in his basement in Chicago. I'm going to break here. If you want to send me a text, 35192, I will have another trip to L.A. for you at 5 o'clock all week. Uh, handing out more trips for our Alter Ego Festival, which is in January, uh, out in Anaheim. If you want to go see 30 Seconds to Mars and you want to go see the 1975 and uh, Paramore, lots of other bands. That keyword at 5 o'clock to put you out there is coming up. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS and everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. Rover's Morning Glory. What about Patrick Mahomes? He has confirmed that he wears the same pair of underwear every game day oh. for his entire NFL career. He said he only washes the underpants when the team loses. That's disgusting. You think his wife maybe... Uh, she bought them for him. I know, but do you think maybe she washes them behind his back? No. because no, it break the yeah, streak. That'd freak him Speaking out. Speaking of streak, yeah, there's probably a bunch.